Good morning and welcome to United Community Bank's quarterly earnings call. Hosting the call today are Chairman and Chief Executive Officer Lynn Harton, Chief Financial Officer Jefferson Harrelson, President and Chief Banking Officer Rich Bradshaw, and Chief Risk Officer Rob Edwards. United's presentation today includes references to operating earnings, pre-tax, pre-credit earnings, and other non-GAAP financial information. For these non-GAAP financial measures, United has provided a reconciliation to the corresponding GAAP financial measure in the financial highlights section of the earnings release, as well as at the end of the investor presentation. Both are included on the website at ucbi.com. Copies of the quarter's earnings release and investor presentation were filed last night on Form 8K with the SEC, and a replay of this call will be available in the investor relations section of the company's website at ucbi.com. Please be aware that during this call, forward-looking statements may be made by representatives of United. Any forward-looking statements should be considered in light of risks and uncertainties described on pages 5 and 6 of the company's 2020 Form 10-K, as well as other information provided by the company in its filings with the SEC and included on its website. At this time, I'll turn the call over to Lynn Harton. Well, good morning, and thank you all for joining in our call today. This has been another great quarter for United. And I want to start by congratulating our teams throughout the company for their performance. On an operating basis, our earnings per share for the quarter was 83 cents, equating to a 148 basis point return on assets and an 18.2% return on tangible common equity. Loan growth, XPPP, was 4.5% annualized, and we continue to have strong overall average balance sheet growth driven by strong deposit growth. Our cost of deposits dropped by two basis points and now stands at only seven basis points. Credit results are also excellent, with net charge-offs of only two basis points and a reserve release of $11 million. Our operating efficiency ratio improved to 52.3%, which is among the best we have reported. And so once again, thanks and congratulations to the United teams that make these kind of results possible. Our strategic initiatives also continue to perform well, Following the completion of our acquisition of FinTrust Capital Partners in July, we continue to see solid performance in this line of business, as well as opportunities to deepen and expand our customer relationships with a stronger wealth management offering. Earlier this month, we completed the acquisition of Aquesta. We expect conversion and rebranding in November and continue to be very excited about the organic growth potential of the Charlotte and Wilmington markets that Aquesta brought to us. Our partnership with Reliant Bank also continues to be on track with an anticipated closing of that transaction in early January. I'm impressed with the quality of the leadership and the teams at Reliant, and I look forward to them joining United. You may have seen, in fact, I hope you did see, Reliant's earnings release last night, where they reported record results for the quarter, demonstrated by a return on assets of 1.74%, a return on tangible common equity of 18.4%, and annualized loan growth, XPPP, of 14%. As I mentioned in our earnings press release, we're also very glad to welcome Jennifer Bazante, Chief Marketing Officer of Humana, to our board. Her expertise in branding, marketing, and digital transformation will add tremendously to our board and will be a great complement to our new Chief Marketing Officer as we continue to invest in these areas. And now I'd like to turn it over to Jefferson for more details on the quarter. Thank you, Lynn. I am going to start my comments on page 9. The chart highlights are relatively consistent and strong loan growth, excluding PPP loans, over the last year, and also shows our strong deposit growth over the same time frame. And in combination, we have become a lot more liquid, and our loan-to-deposit ratio has moved to 66% from 81% a year ago, making us more liquid but also providing us an opportunity to invest this over time. On page 10, we take a closer look at our loan book and our mix of our loans. We had $122 million of loan growth, similar to last quarter, in dollars. It rounds out to 4.5% annualized loan growth, which is net of the sale of a number of SBA and Navitas loans that totaled just over $33 million in the quarter. Moving to page 11, which details our deposit growth, while we had $122 million of loan growth, we also had $537 million of deposit growth, which annualizes at a 13% growth rate. 
Deposit costs are near the bottom, but we were able to move the cost down another two basis points this quarter to seven basis points. On page 12, I will touch briefly on capital. Our capital ratios were relatively flat in the quarter and are above peer levels, partly because of a $100 million preferred raise we did last year. With the Equesta and Reliant transactions, we are putting that raise to work and we expect that our capital ratios will be at peer levels on a pro forma basis. In addition to our dividend this quarter, we did use capital in two ways. One, we purchased FinTrust for cash on July 6th, and we bought back $10 million of shares in Q3. On page 13, we talk about spread income and the margin. Excluding PPP fees and loan accretion, our spread income grew at a 3% annualized pace in Q3. Our core margin was down 10 basis points, mainly due to continued increased liquidity driven by the strong deposit growth in combination with the significant cash flow coming with PPP forgiveness. On page 14, it details our fee income, which had a good growth in Q3 of $4.3 million. That said, $2 million of the $4.3 million increase came from the FinTrust acquisition that closed on July 6th. Besides FinTrust, the income growth was quite strong and was driven by good mortgage results. The mortgage quarter was highlighted by increased rate lock volume and a $1.3 million MSR write down compared to a $3 million write down last quarter. Like last quarter, we had some Navitas loan sales and had $861,000 of gains on $19.3 million of loans sold. We would expect to continue Navitas loan sales in Q4 in addition to our normal SBA loan sales. Page 15 shows our expenses of $800,000 from last quarter. That said, excluding $1.9 million in new operating FinTrust expenses, comparable quarter expenses were down 1% from last quarter. I expect relatively flat to slightly higher expenses in Q4, excluding the impact of Equesta that closed on October 1st. Page 16, we talk about PPP loans. We recognize $12.9 million in PPP fees in Q3 and have $5.8 million left to recognize and $150 million of loans still in the book, of which we expect a significant amount to be forgiven in Q4. Moving to page 17, I'll talk briefly on credit here, and Rob Edwards is here for Q&A on the subject. Net charge-offs were very low at just two basis points annualized, and with improving special mention and substandard accruing loans, we had our third reserve release in three quarters, this quarter releasing $11 million. Page 18 gives you a closer look, and we saw improvements in the businesses that we lend to, Special mention decreased by $92 million, and we saw improvements in substandard and NPAs as well. Moving to page 19, it shows the walk forward of the reserve, excluding PPP loans, our allowance for credit losses moved to 1% in Q3 from 1.12% in Q2. With that, I'll pass it back to Lynn for closing comments. Once again, I want to thank all of our bankers and support staff for continuing to build this company. Their ability to deliver great service which, according to J.D. Power, is number one in customer satisfaction and number one in trust in the Southeast, and also, according to J.D. Power, has the second highest net promoter score in the country. This focus on service continues to set United apart, and it attracts both customers and great bankers to join us. I appreciate your interest in United, and I'd like to now open the floor for questions. Thank you. To ask a question, please press the star and the one key on your telephone keypad. Remember not to use your speakerphone while asking a question. And our first question comes from Jennifer Jewish Security. Line is open. Hi, good morning. Hi, Jenny. Good morning. Um, two questions. Um, the first one is from Rob. Rob, just wondering, um, if my loan is really extraordinarily low um, for the last several quarters, but particularly this quarter, 
wondering how long you think that you know, you know, you know, the guy in the street. This, the second question is on um, deploying the excess liquidity. Just wondering how much you expect to buy in security in the coming quarters versus deploying it slow. So, so uh, Jenny, you're, we're, for some reason we're having a little bit of a problem hearing you, so I'm going to repeat what I think the question is, and that really is just because losses are so low, uh, how long or how long do we think they've been low for a while, and, and uh, this year we're basically at zero year to date. How long do we think they can continue on at zero? And I would just say, at, at the moment, we're fairly optimistic about um, asset quality. We feel good about where the numbers are. We don't see any. Um, have any big looming things, and so we're we're positive uh, and feel strong about continued uh, strong asset quality and relatively low charge-offs. And I'll take the next one, Jenny. I think what I heard you say was uh, maybe it's the timing and plan to use the excess liquidity. Uh, you, you, you saw that our securities both grew this quarter. We had strong loan growth. Uh, we expect uh, to continue to grow our, our, our securities portfolio. Uh, I don't know if we use all of our excess liquidity uh, next year, and we're still coming up with our budget, uh, but what I expect to happen is our deposit growth will slow down. I expect that we'll continue to grow the securities book at uh, roughly this pace, and then we'll have strong uh, loan growth, I believe, too, and you get to the end of next year, and you'll, you, we will have used uh, you know, a pretty significant amount of that liquidity that you see on the balance sheet. Thanks so much. Thank you. Our next question is from Catherine Miller with KBW. Your line is open. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, just one follow up on. Oh, oh that's really hard. Hard. I hope you can hear me. Um, just one follow up on the side. Uh, of the securities book, is there a percentage of average earning assets that you are targeting that for that to maybe not even grow above Jefferson? Uh, great question. And, um, Catherine, what I'm thinking there is there's not really a percentage we won't go above. Uh, it really depends on the loan to deposit ratio, and if there's excess uh, cash on that, we're going to, uh, to put that to work. As the ratio gets larger, as it moves from 30% or even higher, uh, we'll take less risk incrementally with the with the securities we invest in. So we believe we need to put this uh, cash to work, but we'll just uh, incrementally reduce the risk as the portfolio gets bigger as the size of the balance sheet. And is there anything to be aware of as Reliance holds in you know, their securities book or their borrowings or, or deposits that you plan to do as you restructure the balance sheet with all your excess liquidity? Um, another great question. Thanks, Catherine. So what I would say there is their, uh, their securities book is relatively uh, small, uh, so it's, it, it, all, all things equal. It helps our, uh, our balance sheet mix towards, uh, towards loans. Uh, they have, the securities they have are relatively heavy in municipal bonds that we, uh, that we like. We have a, a barbell approach right now in our uh, securities investing. Uh, there are some borrowings to, um, to prepay, but there's not significant – uh, debt that can be prepaid in the near term. So it's not a, a ton on the liability side. If uh, you saw their quarter, they had very significant uh, improvement in their cost of funds on their own. And so uh, with liquidity, uh, that could be an opportunity too over time. But um, uh, so they, they they enhance what we're doing, and they put some they put more of our liquidity to work when you blend them together. And, and would it be fair to assume that your growth rate on loans should improve presumably the next year, just given Reliant is growing at a double-digit pace? And then maybe from a core UCBI perspective, where do you think there is upside to your current kind of mid-double-digit growth rate? Yeah, good morning, uh, Catherine. This is Rich. So, yes, we are hey, up about next year with Reliant and Equesta and uh, feel very good about those markets and layering on our verticals on top of what they're already doing. So incrementally, we're very excited about that. And to address, I think, your other question, just uh, in Q4, uh, we feel that Q4 will be better than Q3. We're going into it uh, 
with a really strong October, feeling really good about the pipelines, what we've seen and the activity in Senior Credit Committee. So we're, we feel like we've got a lot of tailwinds right now. Thank you so much. Our next question is from Kevin Fitzsimmons with DA Davis. Please go ahead. I hope you can hear, I hope you can hear me. Um, I know it's very early uh, with the request to deal having closed, but uh, just curious about any opportunities you're seeing in Metro Charlotte to bolt on uh, new teams or new hires onto that request of platform, whether you're getting inbounds um, from, from teams or officers in, in the region. Thanks. So, hi, this is uh, Rich again. Yes, uh, we're very excited about this. Uh, first of all, just to clarify, we have a large existing commercial team in Charlotte, including a core commercial banking team, but we also have a number of our verticals are located there as well. And what I'm uh, really pleased to tell you is already we've approved two very large existing Aquesta uh, customers for loans that will either close in Q4 or Q1 next year. And so I think we've started off on the right foot, and uh, uh, victories always help. And so you're starting off with two large approvals. Uh, that feels very good, and, and uh, work, we're working. The other part of this is uh, two years ago we hired a leader for us from Aquesta, and he managed about 40% of that existing portfolio. And so we feel good about the possibility. You always worry on an acquisition how much you're going to hold. We feel very good about our inside. We have some inside baseball on this one, and just everything is aligning really well from a credit culture. And I said these two, two first big wins are going to help a lot. Great, thanks, thanks, Rich. Um, and, and one quick, one quick follow-up. There's been a lot of uh, attention to supply chain disruption, worker shortages. Just wondering, is that, in your view, purely a constraint on growth, or is it? Uh, emerging more as a potential creditor. I, I think uh, I'll take a stab at this. This is Rich, and maybe Rob can answer as well. Um, certainly, as we talk to our customers, the two things that we do here are concerns about the supply chain and labor. Uh, so as we think about next year, providing those do not get worse, we still feel real optimistic, and so um, and we haven't seen a lot of impact, but I'll let Rob talk about that. Yeah, on the asset quality side, we're not seeing, um, as you can tell, really an impact from uh, those issues, and so th the way I am looking at it is kind of as you propose, which is people are hesitant to do the next expansion because they're concerned about the issues that you raise. So I, I, see, I see it more as a loan growth um, limiter than really an asset quality element at this point. Okay, great. Thanks, thanks everyone. Our next question is from Brody Preston with Stevens Incorporated. Go ahead, your line is open. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hey, Brody. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to start, start maybe on the loan growth discussion. discussion. And, um, uh, you know, you know four C and I this quarter, 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 you know, you know leg down, leg down by about two percent this quarter. quarter. And so I wanted to ask, was there anything specific, specific that drove that? Drove that? Uh, good morning, Brody. This is Rich. The answer is yes. Um, we did have a Florida CNI credit that we wanted to exit. It was $20 million. It also happened to be special mention credit. So we feel very good about exiting that. Well, one other thing I wanted to just talk about the loan growth. Uh, in Q3, we hired five commercial lenders throughout the footprint. We hired an additional SBA, business development officer, and an asset base loan officer, and a private banker. What Really, we feel great about. In addition to that, is we had we're having serious discussions with a couple of lift out teams that I think would be very prolific in our future, and we've had a lot of success with lift outs. And I can tell you that those haven't happened; they're not finalized, but they're uh, way down the road. And so we feel very excited about that. Okay, thank okay, you, thank you, Rich. 
I guess while we're on the topic of kind of growth, um, you know, I was just yeah. looking at the the quarterly the quarter production value of the year and the year and the year and the year and the and this quarter no. is, you know, up 20% year over year, but it's it's down, you know, each of the last two quarters. And so I wanted to ask, is there anything over the last, you know, six months that's been driving your production to be slower? Or is it, you know, typical of what other banks have been seeing, you know, labor shortages and, and, you know, borrowers holding higher levels of liquidity? I think I think you really kind of summed it up at the end there with uh, we're all we're all kind of facing that a little bit. There's certainly a lot of liquidity in the market and, uh Certainly the supply chain and labor has uh, played into that. But, again, uh, providing those things don't increase going forward, we're very optimistic. Okay, got it. And then on the loan yields, I thought that the core loan yields held up fairly well uh, this quarter. And so I was hoping that maybe you could give me a sense for – for what the what new production yields look like currently, and 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 what the yield that's kind of rolling off the back book looks like. Uh, great question, Brody. Thank you. So the, if you look at the incremental loan yields coming in, if you look at the bank only and leave Navitas out, they're probably coming in 15 to 20 basis points lower than the uh, what the existing loan yield is. And so I think if you look at loan yield by itself, you would say, well, that that loan yield is going to continue to yeah. Uh, come down a little bit. Now, if you look at any given month, if you have a uh, higher uh, mix of Navitas, then you know some of these months are coming in at higher than our existing yield. So it depends a little bit uh, on our mix, but net net, I think it's um, you're going to see the loan yield uh, come down a little bit. Now, at the same time, we have a mix change that's going to help us on the asset side. It helped. It, it did not help this quarter. But uh, with the, uh, the significant amount of cash moved into the securities portfolio, portfolio and some uh, strong uh, loan growth that we think, I think the mix change can go a long way in offsetting the, um, uh, the loan yield compression that I think is going to happen. Uh, Net-net, I think you're going to see a relatively uh, flat margin, plus or minus three basis points, I'd say. Okay, understood. And- and Jefferson, what are the what are the new yields that you're putting on in the securities portfolio? One forty-ish. Okay. 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 And then maybe just on the on the fee income, you know, the the SBA and the Navitas sales. I think last quarter you guys had you know intimated that you know they'd slow down from the second quarter, which quarter they, they did, and kept more, more in the portfolio. portfolio. But if the outlook for the fourth quarter is to be stronger than the third quarter, quarter, would you consider selling more of those SBA loans than you did this quarter? Uh, Rich may step in here in a minute, too. You know, see, quarter four is our seasonally strongest one for SBA loans, so naturally it could be uh, a little higher. Uh, we we uh, think about it also in combination with, the, with Navitas loan sales. I would expect a small amount of Navitas loan sales uh, again. Uh, we, we're trying to balance because we have a lot of cash. We have uh, we want to put some of this to work. We've been having strong fundamental momentum already, and so we really want to keep some of these assets if we can. But the, but also the the, the gain sale market is strong too, and it's our seasonally strongest quarter. So you know I would expect similar to this quarter, but it's a, it is a seasonally stronger quarter, and we would have the opportunity to sell more. Uh, if we want to. Yeah, and I would say we probably have to weave in mortgage in this. And because mortgage we expect to be a little bit down, I would expect that we'll sell a little bit more of SBA this quarter versus last quarter. Got it. Got it. Okay. And okay. I, and I just have two last ones. And, and, and on mortgage. Um, Jefferson, maybe you could speak to throw the significant mortgage in the game on the market. Yeah, so I might pass this to Rich. What I heard on the question was what drove this significant increase on the gain on sale margin uh, this quarter versus last. Um, yeah, so we did uh, we did have two one-time events. Uh, one had to do with the 50 basis points that Fannie and Freddie allowed for uh, inve- second home and investment properties, uh, also known as the adverse market fee. And so that allowed us to take a one-time gain of approximately $800,000 last quarter. And then the preferred stock purchase agreement, uh, 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 when that strategy 
um, happened. We were able to uh, when they when they dis- excuse me they discontinued that strategy. We were able to not sell in the private market, but sell in Fannie and Freddie and get a bigger gain. And so that was the other one-time gain. Understood. And then my last one was on the wealth front. Um, you know, now between Seaside and FinTrust, you've bolstered the, the wealth offering at, at UCBI significantly. So I wanted to ask maybe a couple of questions. And how long until those businesses are kind of operating under one brand, if they're going to be operating under one brand? And then and the markets that you've identified – you know, early yeah. here that you think you can, you can you know, target more effectively than others, and again, that AUM even higher even higher than it is. Sure. Hi, this is Rich again. Uh, so, yes, the uh, FinTrust team and the uh, Seaside team, led by Gideon Haymaker, have been working on this, and the thought is that we'll be really operating as one team at the start of the year. And uh, we're looking at, you know, we've gone, we've gone through all the strategy stuff. Now we're identifying some new hires, and uh, and part of that will identify where we go first is kind of where the talent is first. But it looks like uh, we're going to be bringing those to market first in uh, South Carolina and second probably in North Carolina just based on the talent. But uh, we're very excited about this, and we're also seeing a lot of opportunities to take one-offs on uh, – FAs uh, to bring their portfolios in, and also there's other companies like FinTrust that are available out there that we're looking at. So we're looking at all those things, and it will be a continuum, but uh, we're really thinking about starting next year when you see all that kind of kick off. Great. Thank you very much for taking my question and for suffering through the feedback on the line. It worked. Thanks. And our next question comes from Christopher Marinick with Janny Montgomery. Please go ahead. Thanks. Good morning. Um, question either for Lynn or for Rob or even uh, for Rich, just about sort of the space race to put new cash to work into loans. I mean, how are you balancing the um, kind of need to put the money out but also kind of managing risk? And are you seeing anything uh, more unusual than normal on the competitive front? Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, be glad to. So um, we are, you know, we have, I guess, the good fortune of having a very strong credit culture, and uh, I think our people are disciplined and consistent in how they underwrite and approach credit. And so far, we've been successful at uh, staying true to our culture and how we approach credit. Uh, that's not to say that there are some isolated uh, situations where we see competitors do some one-offs. And um, it's not ruling the market at the day, and so or to, as of today, and so we're able to stay uh, stay true to who we've been over time. I would say, you know, what you're still seeing at this point is more pressure on the lending margin, you know, the, the yeah. credit spread, um, than on structure. Um, certainly, we don't have appetite to compete on structure. Uh, we're blessed with great markets. Um, so, I, you know, but you are seeing it on, on, the, on the credit spread side primarily. Great. Thanks for the additional color and all the uh, background today. And our next question will come with from Michael Rose with Raymond James. Please go ahead. Hey, good uh, <clears throat> good morning. Thanks for uh, taking my question. Um, just wanted to get a sense, uh, Jeff, a sense of the, of the margin as we uh, layer in Aquesta and Reliant, and, and maybe if, if you can talk to what you would expect with all the pro forma adjustments, and, and if you have a sense for what the total amount of accretion to be recognized, both what you're recognizing, what's left now, and then what you'll add with uh, question and rely on. Thanks. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a great question. Uh, let me start with a start with a Questa on there. I expect about six to seven million dollars of new accretion to uh, to come in. Uh, we're at 19 million dollars total uh, from past deals now. Uh, a Questa has a higher margin than us. They're only three uh, percent of our average earning assets. So I think. Um, Nominally better with the Questa. 
uh, by itself. Uh, Reliant is a harder question right now. You know, they just did a 440 uh, margin, so if you add those two together and blend it, uh, it's, it's a higher margin for us, but you're also there's some complications in there because we're taking out uh, their accretion. We're putting in uh, our new accretion. Uh, the, the last two estimates I've seen on the new accretion had a pretty wide uh, range around it, and so I can't uh, give you a number there because it could be because uh, I've seen wide ranges of, of estimates there. Uh, but I would expect there. I, mean, I think it's at least ten basis points higher uh, from Alliant, maybe more depending on the uh, the mark. But the um, I have to, we'll have to come back at a, at a later time to give you our estimate on accretion because the last two estimates I've seen have been uh, pretty different. Okay, helpful. That's all I had. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. And we have no more questions. All right, well, great. Well, once again, just thank you for your uh, interest in United. Uh, our apologies for the audio quality here, and uh, sorry that happened. But anyway, we will talk to you next quarter, if not before, so thank you so much.